Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. It is Monday, January the 9th. We're officially one week into the new year. Our devotion today is coming from uh, Joyce Meyer's book, Trusting God Day by Day. Uh, these should be very easy to find, very inexpensively. I heard a couple of people saying they found it at Cheap Books or something, but it's a it's great. I'm loving how practical and straightforward everything is. So today our devotion is entitled, Making Right Choices Makes Life So Much Better. Boy, and I can agree with that. Our opening scripture comes from the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 24. And it's, it reads, strive to enter by the narrow door, <clears throat> in parentheses, force yourselves through it. For many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. Okay, let's hear how Joyce expounds on this. Like most of us, you're probably tempted to take all the easy paths, but God's path is rarely easy. The Bible describes those other paths, the ones that lead to destruction, as broad, because not a lot of effort is required to remain on them. We are encouraged by God to take the narrow path, the more difficult one, which is also the one that leads to life. We have to make a strong effort to push through the negativity in the world. But if we will do our part, God will always do his. He is a good and awesome God who always fulfills his promises, who always fulfills his covenants and keeps his promises. Daniel 9, 7, I believe. Always fulfills his covenants and keeps his promises. He will always do his. Not everyone is willing to make the effort. They are addicted to ease and simply flow with their feelings. Jesus died for us so we could have a wonderful, abundant life that is filled with peace, joy, power, success, and every good thing. He was willing to go to the cross and pay for our sins, even though physically, mentally, and emotionally, it was very difficult. We, too, must be willing to do what is right and our reward will surely come. God's grace will always enable us to do the right thing if we are willing to do so. Study the word of God regularly. I'm making that one of my um, goals this year is to read God's word every single day. So far, so good. Study the word of God regularly, and then when trouble comes, you will already have your spiritual tank full of fuel that will enable you to make the right choices. Don't be the kind of person who prays or has time for God only when you feel like it or you have a disaster. Seek God because you know you cannot navigate safely in this world without him. You and I can let our minds drift aimlessly day after day, and we can be controlled by our emotions. Or we can strive to gird up our minds, choose our thoughts carefully, and manage our emotions. God has set before us life and death, good and evil, and has given us the responsibility of making the choice. Choose life. This one is, I really appreciate the way she lays it out here because we truly could just go with the flow. You know, just let our minds wander aimlessly from thought to thought and just flow with it instead of bringing captive every thought that's a lie from the devil that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. We do need to fill ourselves with the word of God so we have something to go by. Many people, I get the impression feel that belief in God is enough, but they don't do anything to cultivate relationship or to inform themselves in the spirit. They don't read God's word for themselves. 
They don't pray and seek his face to get revelation of what the word of God is saying to them in that moment. Because we all know the word of God is a living document, a living resource. You could read a scripture and it can mean something one time. You go back and read it another time and it'll take on a whole new meaning for you. That's what I mean by it's living. They're not attending church because the church is full of hypocrites and religious um, uh well, hypocrite, there was another word I was thinking of, but, you know, religious people who aren't sincere, you know, I don't want to go there. Well, you know, at least the hypocrite's there. You know, if there's one person in a church, it's already imperfect. Okay. There's no perfect church. You have to look at the ones that are lining themselves up with God's word. Okay. If they're lining themselves up with God's word and they put God first in everything and give room for the Holy Spirit, if they're doing anything incorrect, Anything needs to be turned. They're listening to the Lord and he will change course where it's needed. Okay. We have to be wise. We can't look to a person. We have to look to God and not be a church hopper. Oh, I didn't like what they said. I want to go where my ears are going to be tickled. You see what I'm saying? They're not making a sincere effort to know God in a personal relationship. And then when the world comes at them, they have nothing to stand on, nothing to pull from. They don't have the fellowship of other believers to encourage them, to let them know that someone else has gone through this and God was faithful because they haven't done the work. They want to go where it's easy. They want to go with the easy flow. It's like swimming upstream. I love the uh, series, The Chosen. If you haven't watched it yet, they're now on season three, episode five went up last night live. So my husband and I are going to enjoy watching that probably tonight. Um, I know that the lead actor who's portraying Jesus, I think his name is Jonathan Romy. I know he's a Catholic, but he is in relationship with the Lord 100%. That's why I'm saying don't label somebody by a religion, okay? Don't label somebody. Don't judge somebody by the denomination they follow because you've been told people in that denomination are from the devil. Stop it. You know, God, if they're in relationship with the Lord, he doesn't care what denomination that they fall in. My first encounter with the Holy Spirit was in the Catholic Church. And uh, God has led me into more of an evangelical Pentecostal kind of faith now. But I still look at people not based on their religion. They're my brother or sister in Christ. Okay. But the chosen opening credits, the, the little animation that they have going when they're, you know, doing all that is fish swim, swimming opposite of the flow. And that's really how we have to live our lives. It's sometimes tough to say no to something. You know, my husband and I have many times uh, before the pandemic happened, our date night was dinner and a movie. We would go out to the movie theater and there's been several times where we have paid good money to watch a show only to get up and leave after 20 or 30 minutes because the language or the content was filthy and very disturbing and distressing to our spirits. And that's sometimes hard to say no to things, especially when you've paid money for it. Um, but making a stand for righteousness and saying no when your friends are involving themselves with things or they're getting involved in conversations that's gossipy that you should not be a part of, listening to dirty jokes and saying, you know what, guys, I really don't want to hear that stuff. Let's talk about something else. You see what I'm saying? It can be hard because you have mockers and things that come in and actually, I was reading today in Proverbs chapter 9, because it's the ninth day. Let me get it. It says, anyone who, this is beginning in verse 7, anyone who rebukes a mocker will get an insult in return. Anyone who corrects the wicked will get hurt. So don't bother correcting mockers. They will only hate you. But correct the wise, and they will love you. Instruct the wise, and they will be wiser. Teach the righteous, and they will learn even more. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. I have to admit, not 
reading it today did I get this revelation. This was a while back where the Lord really showed me I wasn't walking in wisdom, that I was behaving more like a fool in the sense that I didn't like correction. And that had to do with fear of failure and things like that. And I had to really put that before the Lord and become teachable and humble. Pride was connected with all that stuff. And you don't realize you have that until you read something like that. Till you read the word of God. The word of God is instructional. It's meant to help us. So it's so important to have the word of God so we can make the right choices. We need to, to live a life that is beautiful, that is fulfilling, that is the life God wants us to have. It's so much better because I'm somebody, I don't like to make mistakes. And again, that's probably fear of failure. And there's some other psychological things I'm sure that somebody can point to and say, but you know, I want to do and live my life the way the Lord would have me to live my life. I don't want to make a decision that gives the enemy a, a position of strength in my life. Mm -mm. I want him under my foot where he belongs so I can walk in confidence in the life and blessing that God wants me to have. So I hope that word was encouraging for you today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this word today. And I ask you, Father, to help us live our lives the way you would have us to live our life, that we can make wise, right decisions, oh God, that we will not go with the flow along the broad path, but instead change course and take the narrow path that's not easy. Give us strength, oh God, order our steps. Help us, oh Lord, to change our morning routines or our habits so that we, Lord God, will have that time with you to start our day off right. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. If you haven't already, I hope you decide to like and subscribe, click that notification bell, and come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. I <clears throat> did not, I was overly ambitious yesterday and did not get all of my Christmas trees taken down. The main one in the living room is down, <laughs> and my patriotic tree in the dining room will be coming down today. And hopefully, if I'm not biting off too much, my bedroom tree. But the baby's room, those trees are down. The foyer tree is down. The living room tree is down. I think the last thing I'll be packing up will be my village. And my husband, we, he had a full day. We did have get a lot achieved this weekend. So I'm not going to say we didn't get a lot done. We did get a lot done. But I was overly ambitious, as I usually am, and think I have more time than I actually do. I've got a lot to do today. So thank you again. God bless you and bye until next time.